You're listening to Paris Search Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Paris Search UK Radio. Paris Search Radio, broadcasting to the UK and beyond. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to Kerry Greenaway and Mark Manley on the Dark Mirror Paranormal Show. Only on Parasearch Radio. Whoops! Good evening and welcome to the Dark Mirror Paranormal Show. My name is Kerry Greenaway and as always I'm joined in the studio by the lovely Mark Manley. Good evening Mark. Lovely. My God, you should have got the spec savers. Hello. And the fantastically wonderful Kaz Rooney. Hi, Kerry. Hi, Mark. I've dragged Kaz on. She's poorly. Yeah. She is poorly. She's <laughs> not a very well girl, but I've dragged her onto the show tonight because I've told her to unleash her awesome tonight. <laughs> She's raising her eyebrows at me as I speak. So. <laughs> uh, right, guys. Tonight... We haven't done any research for tonight's show because what I wanted to discuss with you guys is do we talk the talk or walk the walk? Do we actually put into practice what we preach when we do investigations? Now there's a concept, isn't there? Yeah. That's what we've spoken about, yeah. Because, I mean, you've been on investigations with me and I've been on one with you and Kaz has been on one and me and Kaz have been on one together, haven't we? Um, yeah. And yes, we do. All the stuff we say we do in investigations, we actually do. Now, I found this on a spiritual front. I found this uh, quite a lot lately. Is that people don't always understand the concepts behind what we um, what we do. So, like for example, from a spiritual perspective, we talk about smudging our home. Yeah. And they'll get their smudge sticks and they'll go around and smudge and go, oh, "I've done the job." Mm-hmm. You better not start playing with your toy right now, dog. I'm telling you now. <laughs> honestly what a moment is going to be squeaking the whole way through the show i can tell um but there is it, it's not as simple as that there, there's a lot more to it so when we go to an investigation do we just turn up with our tech i know he's going to be squeaking all the way through and i can't get to him either he's gone too far out of range <laughs> that's you mark i know that's you squeaking all right um <laughs> We turn up to an investigation and we... It's going to be so distracting. That's going to be so distracting. Excuse me one moment, guys. Do we turn up to an investigation and we set up our tech, but do we actually know what we're doing with the tech that we've got? Do most people know what they're Uh doing with the tech? Why are we measuring the things we're measuring? Why are we opening and closing on a spiritual front? Why are we protecting? Is there, you know, right ways, wrong ways to do this? Is... That's what I wanted to talk to you about tonight. So well, although some we know the concept, do we actually do exactly what's needed to be done? In the process of opening and closing, it's different for everybody, though. Yeah. True. Because, yeah, some you do one, do Kerry does group. one, and I do one. Some people don't do it in a group. Some people do it before they go. True. I've known people who do it before they go. Yeah. Um, Lynn's does I do as well. Um, but it is important to do that and I always close before we leave. Mm-hmm. But I'm so used to doing that. I could be walking about doing that. You wouldn't know I'm doing that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I can do that yeah, really I, easily. I, I, I do like a, a weird-ass cheat thing. Mm. But when I do it, I cover me and then I expand it yeah. and cover everybody else as well. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Yeah. And... Like with the equipment, I would, 
when we go to big places, like when we do um, like the big forts and stuff like that, I actually do go around and do base readings so that I get the mm. like the ambient temperature, whatever the EMF is in these particular rooms. And I will make notes of it because I'll come back periodically and check. Um, and I do that for the whole reason. You know, you'll soon see if there's any difference if there's you know in temperature or in, in electricity or this that and the other after all the lights are off and all this that you know. And um, I found that on a couple of the uh, ports that we've done that's come in very handy but i don't do it for every single place we go because there's no point no it's very dependent isn't it on um like i said right at the start of the show there's a lot of talking the talk about <laughs> stuff you know like i do this i do that i've done this i've done that on investigations but we don't no. always do that on every investigation but surely if we were walking the walk and it was a natural working method. We should be doing it on every investigation. So I don't agree with that. Each okay. investigation is different. They're all different. Okay, so expand on that. You can go into one place and you've got to work on a spiritual level. You can go to another place and you've got to work on a tech level. It's not necessarily and... all going to work in the one place. I've been in places wanna... where the tech won't work at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kerry, I mean, you, you know that yourself. I was going to say, Kerry knows that herself. We've been to places where you have to use, like, the radio signals for the spirit box and stuff. Um, and there's some places where there's... Can you stop doing that? There's some places where the radio signals just won't get through and you uh, can't use it. Don't want to know what's going off to, off to my right. Honestly, um, we've got and, mayhem going on in the, behind the scenes tonight. Is all I can say. There is mayhem. Not here. In... I'm being good. <laughs> For once, Kaz is actually being good. But in my house and Mark's house, it's absolute <laughs> mayhem behind the scenes. Also, and here's a, what, another one that proves what, what, what why I say it varies from place to flip neck place. Um, do you remember when we did those dance, the dance studios and there was no point in doing the EMF because of that electric uh, electric box room? True. But there's no, there was no point in doing it there because when I went in that hallway, I, when I found out that the whole reason why people were feeling sick in that particular bit of hallway and started seeing things and stuff was because of such high EMF going through there. They were off the scale, weren't they? And it was all because of that electricity room. And there was about so, 20 you know, electricity Boxes. Sub boxes, wasn't it? Yeah, sub boxes in one room. It was crazy in there. Yeah. So, uh, it, it was crazy you know, down there. It is dependent on location. It is. I mean, Carl Hutchinson in the chat room says, from my point of view, every investigation has different ways of looking at it. So you have to use the equipment depending on what the location needs. Yes, I totally agree with you, Carl. And as we've just pointed out with that particular location that we went to um, in regards to all those electricity sub boxes. However, how much then do you need to judge the location before you go? Um, I think... Personally, um, I think you two will agree on this because you work spiritually, whereas I don't. I work, I either use my cheese stuff or I use my tech. That's it. But when we go to certain places, I watch for the ones who've got the who are gifted, like you guys. And if you guys start working instantly straight away, then I know damn well that that's not the place to be using nothing but tech. I know I should be listening to you guys and following you guys, and then using. Maybe the old app or the old bit of equipment that will work in conjun- conjunction with you guys, I might emphasize what you guys are doing as well. Surely if we're I, working... I, I like to go and engage it. But surely if we're working spiritually um, in that way and we're getting um, information or reactions or something like that, you should be taking it out to the max to see if we can back it up with an environmental data. Not really, because we've done that before and I've pulled tech out and it scared them away, so, you know. It's a very difficult one to judge, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah. Yeah, I find I find that maybe... I do find we have main... We have, like, common things that we will use in every single investigation. And I think that's the same for any uh, paranormal investigator, any, any paranormal team all over the world. You will have the same sort of, like key things that you'll, you'll use in every single investigation like i always have an emf meter you know i have k2 mm-hmm. meter um i always what else i always have crystal on me um and i'll always have a voice recorder on me i think those are like the main things 
because it's not every single one we use a voice box. It's not every single one you, you'll use like a REM pod. It's not every single one I'll use the Simon Says uh, ghost interaction thing. Um, and it's not every single one that you'll, 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 use, you'll use lasers and this, that, and the other end, mm. you know? So we go back to how well do you judge a location before we go? For example, if you're going to incorporate things to try and increase activity, like the Singapore mm-hmm. theory, you need to know a little bit about your locations and possible hauntings as to know what to use as triggers. And to know what you're going to bring in. Mm. You know, if you're going to an RAF base, then you, you may want to bring um, sounds coming in. They may not have had Spitfires, and there's no, so there's no point downloading a Spitfire engine sound if there was no Spitfires at that particular air base. It was Lancaster bombers, for example. You know, um, there's no point paying Vera Lynn if it was World War, I don't know, World War One rather than World War Two. <laughs> you know, things like that. So, how well do you need to know your location? I mean, we like to have a dedicated researcher that's not going to work on a spiritual front, which is Mark generally. Um, uh, before you know, who does a lot of groundwork on that before we go to a location. So we can incorporate those things. I, w- I mean, I will say, as you know yourself, when I do the research for places, I, ne- I don't tell you guys what's going on there. I, we, we always have a, a debrief afterwards. Then mm-hmm. afterwards, then I'll say, you you know, you're almost spot on and there was this mm-hmm. and there was that and blah, blah, blah. But I won't tell you beforehand. Um, and as uh, what Carl just said, it's not all about one piece of equipment. It's about multiple hits to multiple mm-hmm. bits of equipment. No, no, that's, that's what I was trying to say is we have like three or four bits that we will use every single time. And we don't say like we're in a location. We won't use it in one bit of that location. Well, myself and, and Kerry, we go everywhere. We, well, I mean, because Kerry and I, for some reason, work well as a team. So <coughs> pain in the back, that she is. So we'll go everywhere and use all the equipment everywhere. You know, and it is, you, as you said, rightly say, it is multiple hits in multiple places. Mm. It is. It's I about do like building the, up that picture, isn't it? Well, I do like to make sure Carrie has her multiples, so yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, my God, it started 11 minutes into the show. I uh, did well up to that point. Sorry, <laughs> Ian's made me say that. Uh-oh. Uh, Jay, you've got Jay saying that now. Do you realise this? <laughs> on, the man, Param- on the Paramania show, on when we do that on a Thursday night at midnight... He has now started shouting aliens at me, and that is all down to you, and I hate you for that. I now have two shows a week where I have people screaming aliens at me. You need to get me back on that show. (laughs) Maybe maybe not. (laughs) It's a mayhem when you two get together. (laughs) Anyway, back to the topic. So, okay, so indoor or outdoor locations, how do you prepare differently? You've got to take it a hell of a lot. For you guys, especially because you, you're you're gifted, you've got to take a heck of a lot into consideration, especially with outdoor locations. Um, what's in the bedrock? What's the weather going to be? Is there running water? Is there any electricity nearby? Um, high crystal content, etc., etc., etc. Do you know what the best thing I think about outdoor locations is? Really? Yeah, we all know what you're like for outdoor locations, but we're talking on this paranormal front here, Kaz. What? You're, all the thing you need is a camcorder, a torch, and an e, um, EVP recorder. Honestly. I'm you calling a torch. taking loads of tech with you. You need to be trusting in yourself if you're doing anything. If you're wandering thing. around in the woods with a camcorder yeah. and a torch, it's no wonder all those strange men in raincoats keep talking, <laughs> is it? <laughs> I think outdoor, because th- because there is so much chance, as Carl's just said, it, it's horrible because you have so, mu- so much regarding contamination. It, yeah. In regards yeah. to tech, exactly. EVPs, any of that sort of stuff, it's an absolute nightmare. You know what I mean? When we did, if you remember, we was at Hadley Castle, we tried using the spirit box. Oh, my God, every radio station in the world was popping up. Because of the location yep. of where it was, I think. We, I think at one point we were even tuning into. Um, there's an airport not far. I think we was even tuning into the tower. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think we could have directed traffic from where we were. Um, no point whatsoever. Absolutely no point whatsoever. So I we think- ended up working outdoor. I find that mostly you work on a more spiritual front because yeah. the tech it's a nightmare. Yeah. 
I I think myself from outdoors, Kaz Kaz was almost spot on with that. For me personally, for outdoors, I can do without the camcorder, but the uh, digital camera. You know what? Though? I do like to find reg- yeah. the, the temptation, uh, and <laughs> when you've got a camcorder and you're out in an outdoor location, you have to do the Blair Witch Project. You have What's to not do. all hanging out no, and everything. You yeah, you have to do with the <laughs> beanie hat, the snot, the tears. You have to do it. You know, that's where you rack out your acting skills just for the pure comedy factor of that moment. Do you Don't know what? There's, actually, there's <laughs> actually several outdoor ones on my old YouTube channel that we done in cemeteries and forests and things like yeah, that. Yeah, we got some. That are really good. I, I think I mean, if really you've got good, really good responses. I think but, if you've got an outdoor location that you know there's nothing there and it's far yeah. enough away from like motorways and houses and this that and the other, where it is um, to coin a phrase dead, um, yeah. like Hockley Woods and Epping Forest, I think you can just about get away with it. You're still going to get a lot of outside interference from, from base things. You might even get it from ley lines. I don't know, but. I, I think my own thing for outside is pendulum, possibly uh, a torch, definitely, and digital camera. Um, you, you, you're going to take your, your you're going to take your chances with a voice recorder and with a, a camcorder. I think you know. The the problem is, I think, with outdoor locations in particular, um, any noise, any breeze in the trees, or if you're in a derelict location, can cause you to think you might capture <coughs> something when you haven't. I'll let you into a little secret about one of the, the um, places we've been in. All I will say is nuclear bunker, and I won't name the person, but when I looked through the videotape evidence, there was one bit, there's a certain person who was doing a lot of camcorder filming, and they farted, and they didn't realise that I was sort of like about 20 feet behind them with my night vision stuff on. <laughs> and all you can hear is this gentleman going, like that. That sounds and like a creaky door. <laughs> yeah, and I had to turn around and walk off and was laughing so much because it's like, D- D- I've just got to delete that. That can't be put in there. Otherwise, as sure as God, my little green apples, we know it's a fart, but somebody's going to go, <gasps> Ghosts! Oh, possibly, you know, yeah, possibly. Like, no, no. I mean, when I was something in may have died, but it wasn't a ghost. I was out. I was doing outside in Banbury, and um, literally, I was with this team, and oh god, then there was this. Oh my god, blood curdling scream. Right, that's the only way I can describe it. And literally, everybody went into fright or flight mode. Yeah, because it was yeah. that bad. This curdling scream. It's grouse. Oh. It, no, it was a grouse. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it literally scared the bloody bejesus out of us all. Yeah. I mean, and you know that there's going to be wildlife. You know that there's going to be rustlings. Yeah. I mean, when we did Hockley um, with the public view, I actually stood there and stood everybody in a circle. And we was in, like, off the beaten track, as it were. And I said, right, everybody, I want you to stand very, very still. Turn all your lights off and literally listen. Right, yep. the amount of noise that a forest or a wood or yeah. an outdoor place, you'd be surprised the amount. And you could hear footsteps, which is generally a fox or a badger or a hedgehog yeah. or aliens. <laughs> 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 or, <laughs> or something along those lines. Do you know what I mean? But I wanted everybody to get an idea how difficult it is to judge what you hear and how easy it is to misperceive what it is, particularly in an outdoor location. And if you're in a derelict outdoor location, we I remember we did a church. We came across a derelict church. Um, I think you were there, Mark, in, near Pluckley, on the hill. The church on the hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you remember that one? And That's there was a, a bat. A bat flew out. That's right, yes. Scared. <laughs> the, again. People going, ah! Yeah, people were like screaming because they it was unexpected. And then where it flew out of, there was a load of cobwebs came out as well. See, Do you remember there's that? There's so many jokes there about cobwebs flying out and things, but I'm not going to. 
<laughs> Good. Um, <laughs> now, Richard in the chat room has said, General Paranormal Investigators has carried on in its modern format for about 10 years now. Worldwide, there are countless paranormal investigation teams, which a majority would claim they are trying to gain evidence of the existence of the paranormal. <laughs> um, over the past 10 years, what part of this phenomena has been proven or everybody has a general consensus on? it's so difficult to judge because every if you've captured something that you can't explain first of all you have to put it out to your peers but you have to have the relevant data to back that up with so if you're in an indoor location you have to have the base data to back that up with and that's record 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 all the time a lot of people don't do that back work so are we talking the talk and not walking the walk which is where we're going with this show i think a lot of people are i think they're just walk, you know walking the walk because they see it on TV, or they, fo- f- you know, follow that formula. I like to record as much as I can if I'm inside, unless I'm with someone. If it isn't me that's running it, I've got to go by the rules of whatever that team is, and I have been with teams who use no equipment, so... But there has been... I was going to was gonna say, as, as we've said, all depending on what the location is, where it is, etc., etc., etc. I will try and record some sort of evidence, whether it's going to be photographic, video, or um, audio. But I'll always try and record some sort of evidence. But I do, as we've all said, we all do it, but we vary it from place to place to place. But what Kerry's getting at, and I completely wholeheartedly agree with, is there are people out there who've seen various programs on TV and gone, I can do that gone on to Wish, bought themselves a bit of kit and gone out there and not walked the walk. Mm. Yeah. 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 I think it helps, like, in our team, like, because, you know, we've we've got the um, uh, Dark Knights team, plus we've also, you know, we've got now got the Trident team, which Kerry is part of, of you are a part of, Lindsay's and I am. And um, I will only go on a team where... I trust everybody, and I think everybody knows what they're doing. And quite frankly, I think our team at the moment is spot on. And and a lot of the other guys in Trident as well, I think, are spot on. But for us and what we cover, I think we're absolutely spot on with that because we've got, within us, we've got somebody that covers every single side of the stuff that we use, if you see what I mean. I do. Now, in regards to, I think it's very, very difficult on just about every level because if you've got somebody working spiritually and that gets backed up by an evp or a spirit box session or um, whatever method you want to use tech wise um i think that's very difficult because there have been experiments that have proved about imprinting you know like telepathic in, in telepathic imprinting effect you want yeah there is a term for it. I can't think of it now. But it's basically where you think <laughs> it's it's been an experiment that's been done. And I know Brian J. Cano has looked into this quite a lot, um, where you think of a word and then it comes out on a, on a EVP, a uh, voice recorder. Yeah. An EVP. I see, I should know all these bloody terms by now, really, honestly. I'm going to have to say <coughs> it myself. But um, so it's Go on, telepathic Let me see. interaction. Let's, let's that's the terminology I was uh, using. So it's very difficult because you can't then go, well, they are definitely conversing with the spirit, but it could be that the information they're getting is just imprinting or telepathic interacting with the piece of equipment. Because we have done, there have been experiments done that have had that happen. So where, where do you lead with this, and I'm using air quotes, evidence? Because if we've used, if we've done that in experiments before, what is to say that that isn't happening a lot more than we think? Well, that's my problem with spirit boxes. Um, mm. You've got spirit boxes and then you've got ovulus. Um, and a lot of these apps, boxes, whatever, have a predetermined list of words already in it that they cycle through, as you, as you know. And then with um, and then with spirit boxes, you're literally just picking up what comes along on the radio. Somebody burnt the beans. You're literally picking up... <laughs> what's on the radio and that again just goes through whatever random words it picks out so Mm -hmm. um, it's it's very very difficult isn't it to say that because I say but some of the experimentation that's been done in the field has sort of like backed up a different theory other than spiritual you know um (coughs) but then again you get mediums that get blindfolded 
not told where they're going, led through the location pretty much blindfolded, and then Mm -hmm. come out with some absolute amazing verification of history and names and dates and circumstances that have surrounded it. Do you Um, know what I mean? Yeah. No, I do. I was going to say is personally out of all the stuff. Do you know what my favourite bit of equipment is? That Simon says app. I know, because I, I don't uh, get that. I really don't get only, why you like app that app so much. Because it, it only works on motion. It only works on motion. It doesn't have pre-programmed words. It doesn't have pre-programmed program this. It doesn't have pre-programmed program that. It literally, if there's a motion, it will set off a sound and play the light in the direction that that motion came from. That's it. But it's still an app. Not my favourite will always be my EVP recorder. Yeah, I like exactly. Lindsay's EVP recorder. That's a good one. I mean, I'm not a lover like of, of tech, as we all know. I, I yeah. kind of like stay away from tech, but then that's because of how I work in the field. I admire anybody who could press the right buttons in the dark. You know what I mean? Because I can't Baby. Yeah. <laughs> That sounded a little rude, didn't it? But, um... <laughs> well, it you is just realised that, didn't you? It is Friday night, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Um, where was I going with that? Um, because I work in such a spiritual way, but I'm not a medium. You know, I work in a... It's difficult to explain and back up what you feel. That's the other thing, is I want that. I want to be able to peep somebody to be able to back up what I'm doing with a piece of tech. But there isn't that bridge yet, is there? We haven't got that bridge yet. There's so much we don't understand in the field. And because of that, people can only just talk the talk. Because it is all based on theories and hypotheses and submissions and perceptions. And there is so much we don't know. Did you come to the True Crimes Museum? Yeah. You, got, you <laughs> must remember that I was there because I got hooked on the fence. Oh, yeah, you did, didn't you? Well, do you remember <laughs> where that lethal injection bed was? Yeah, I was intimate with that lethal bed injection, yeah. yeah sorry. Um... You had a lethal bed injection? Um, no, you know what I mean. <laughs> what happened there was, remember, we set the Simon Says thing up and we left it to sort itself out. And when we came back, you immediately picked up on something. And every time you said, oh, there's, you know, whatever it was you picked up on, that Simon Says thing went off. And it was only with you. It didn't do Oh, it did it with one other person as well. Um, that was one of the guests. But it <coughs> only worked mainly when you, every time you came in and, and you picked up on those certain things that was the only time it would kick off but it doesn't prove anything no but it, it helps to back it, it up helps a bit. To, if you're working on a spiritual yeah. level like if i went into a location and it has happened i've went into locations if i'm particularly drawn to one particular area i'll set up the tech in yeah. that area to try and capture yeah, no, the I agree with that, that I'm being drawn to that area. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, so you've got it in that way. No, I, no, I totally agree with that. I mean, the only thing that I think bugs a lot of us actual paranormal investigators is when you get the TV programmes that do it purely for the entertainment purposes, and it does say on there it's for entertainment yeah. purposes only, but when you get people out there who go, oh, my God, this must be real, and then they'll go out and buy the equipment, trying to do exactly the same thing and then they feed off because they're not getting those results, you know? And it's like, well, real paranormal investigators, sometimes they'll go out and the only thing they'll catch is a cold, you know? Yeah. Nine times but out of ten. That's why we all love it because st- it's just the buzz. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? And then when things do happen, and that from a, par- uh, from a researcher's point of view, that coincides with the stuff that I know has happened, I love it, you know? I'm very dubious of teams that go to locations every week, every two weeks, and, oh, it was all so active, and this was happening, and that was happening, and I'm sitting thinking, really? We've, I mean, we've been to places ourselves, and there's nothing that's been dead. Yeah. I've been places that's been dead. Literally, you've sat about most of the night drinking tea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Uh, there's a couple of forts that we've been to, and Kerry's been there, and it's just been... 
up until about midnight, one particular thought I can remember was actually quite active. And then as soon as it hit midnight, it, that was it. To coin the phrase, dead. You know, and uh, that was it. They were just, just packed up and gone home. You know? And it's been like that in several occasions. But you do get the old one where it will be active, you know, but it's, that's a rarity. So, right, majority of the time we're out at night, mainly because of life, timing, all that yeah. sort of stuff, outside pollution. I, I actually think I would like to start doing more daytime investigations. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. That, There's nothing to stop you doing daytime if you want to do daytime. I know. And to be fair, activity can happen at any time. There's it, there's no hard and fast rule that it only happens at night between this point and that point. You know, 90% of personal experiences happen during the day just living your day-to-day life. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's like um, uh, that castle in um, Cornwall. Oh. Very Pomeroy Castle. I, I have photographic evidence of a of a spirit whatever but i i thought and everybody else who was there at the time there was about 40 50 of us all saw this we thought it was just one of the people at work there in period costume you know looking out of a window and it was only when we went into the main castle where we'd seen this person looking out the second floor window when you look up it was just shelled there were no floors um and it's like oh you know and that was broad daylight and it was lots of people saw it um you know, and it was, there was people who were there who weren't paranormal investigators. They weren't paranormal fans or into it or anything. They just like um, the uh, history of it. And they saw it as well. Mm. Yeah. But so don't think... you think... Oh, now I mean, the majority of these TV programmes, they are doing their investigations at night. That's why people think they need to do them only at night. That's there why is, a there... lot of people... That's true. But there's also that factor of it is a lot quieter... You know, even yeah, down yeah. to, um, even down to electricity use around you, it's all yeah. very quiet. You know what I mean? You get if you're in a more accessible location, you get less road noise. You know, you and there, there is nothing better than the thrill of being in a strange building in the middle of the night. You know what I mean? There is that that factor of it all. Mm. But I would like actually to see more paranormal teams doing daytime investigations where possible rather than just at night. I cannot tell you the amount of footage I've watched. I'm getting a little bit fed up with night top, night vision, watching yeah. other people's yeah. night vision, doing yeah. the daytime. Well, Why not? Also, another, another thing with night vision, um, you get a hell of a lot of thoughts on night vision, and I don't think it's paranormal. I think it's just insects and dust, you know? And it doesn't help when it gets showing up on the... On the um, uh, night vision, but when you use normal mm. lights or whatever, you don't see it. You know? yeah. It gives a false, false reading and gives people false hope. Mm. So, yeah, a daytime investigation, or a few of them, I'm definitely up for that. So when we look at other teams, we look at things like that. Are they educated in orbs? Are they educated in how they're working practices? Do we actually judge other teams, or are we just, you know... Um, all doing the same thing, but just on slightly different educated levels. Mm. Like when we okay. do our evidence review, are we just, yes, we, we are looking at it through slightly more educated viewpoint, only because we are a little bit more educated. These other teams, maybe they're just at the beginning of their journey and they, they haven't done the research quite to the level that we may have done at this point because we've been in it a few years. You live and learn. You know what I mean? So when you get a new team or a, a team that's just doing it every week and putting out there, again, in, in little quotes, evidence, it's just not because they're bad or they're, you know, not, they're, they're just at a very early stage of their journey and they're just not educated to that point yet. They're just starting to learn are, this journey. Yeah, it, there are some teams out there who, like... All of us who've been in it for years, mm. we all started. Everybody started at the beginning. And there are some teams out there who literally don't have the knowledge or the experience purely because they've only just started up. It's not through lack of ignorance or anything. It's purely starting up. And you can have as much knowledge as you want in the world, but until you've got that experience under your belt, you're not really going to know too much about it. I mean, we're all seasoned old farts, so we know what we're doing. 
Um, you know, oh, no, I disagree. But, I still think we're at the very early stages of our journey in regards to the paranormal. And even though we've been doing it a while, and we've talked to powerful. lots of people and we, we've researched lots of different things. I still think we're very young in regards to um, our knowledge regarding the paranormal and that as, side of things. As Lynn just said, every, every investigation we go on, we're always learning. Sorry, Kaz, carry on. Yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I've, Lynn's just turned around and said, because she doesn't like speaking up on the radio, um, that every investigation you go on, we're always learning. We're always learning something new, and everybody's always learning. But everybody has to start from the beginning, so you are going to get those teams that are going to go, oh, my God, did you see that? You know? I think we must have all done it at some point. I know I have. You know, but now I'm a bit older and wiser. Go, no, actually, Marjorie, it was an owl or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very true. <laughs> yeah. It was an owl. Um, oh, yeah. It is difficult, isn't it? It's a difficult balancing act. I'm going to just say this. Investigate, uh, Carl, Carl, lovely Carl, in the chat room says, investigating at night means it sort of cuts down all outside things, but it does not mean that activity only happens at night. But personally, I think everyone looks better in night vision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely irons the wrinkles out at night. I will say that. Um- one thing I will also say, I'm not going to name names or teams. There are some teams out there who've been doing it for as long as some of us, some of them longer. And I will very, be very careful how I say this. Who get, certain members get so arrogant that they think that their way is the best and everybody should do it their way yeah. and nobody else should. And they will go publicly on air and slate other people, other teams, and this, that, and the other. And people in the radio do it as well. Um, and it's a lot in the paranormal terms, uh, paranormal world. I don't think people should be like that. I think, um, like we do, when we talk about um, most haunted and things like that, we have a laugh and a joke about it, but we don't magic, we don't, we don't slate them and say, you should do this. We don't categorically say, you should do this, you should do that, you should do this. Everybody has their own style and way of doing things, and I think that those particular teams and team members and radio presenters, etc., 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 they need to remember that, and they also need to remember that they started out the same as everybody else wants. Okay, so that does bring into another facet of walking the walk or talking the talk. The TV shows do bring in a lot of different ideas. I mean, talking about Most Haunted, they have brought Fred Bat on, who is a demonologist, and at one point they had a vet standing in a salt circle um, for protection. Now, that particular person allegedly knows a lot of what he's talking about. He's obviously studied that for a long time and knows what he's talking about in regards to that kind of working. From what I understand, you are, you you know, guys, I mean, I don't know him personally, so I don't know his knowledge base, but I would imagine... If he's putting himself out there in a public way, in that way, he's got a pretty good idea of what he's doing and what he's talking about, right? Okay. People may take that concept and talk the talk with it, and this is what my worry is in regards to talking the talk and not walking the walk. How much work have they done behind the scenes to actually learn the proper conceptual ways of working in those ways? I'm talking more in those kind of spiritual way of working. I mean, the occult is on the rise at the moment. It is an incredibly popular fashion Easter kind of bandwagon at the moment. And and that worries me because people, again, are talking the talk but not walking the walk. It's not a five-minute journey, that journey isn't. It's something you have to learn. And, you know, there are things you need to know to work in that way. But maybe I people think... are just picking up tiny snippets of information in, in regards to everything. I'm getting a hit on my um, EMF meter. That must mean there's a ghost. I'm going to do a circle, a, a salt circle to protect, but I'm not actually doing anything with that salt circle. I'm just putting it out. It's talking the talk, but not walking the walk. Can you understand yeah, no, where I'm no. going with this? Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, things like that, Add a lot of credulity to the programs for a start. Um, 
And yes, it does, it does look very good. Oh, he's on a salt circle. You go and stand in that. But what people who don't really know this sort of stuff is, what words were said when it was being made? Did he do any particular shapes and things within the salt circle? Um, what was said over it? Blah, blah, blah. Was anything done to help protect yeah. her before she went to it? And all this sort of thing. Yeah. TV, people, lay, lay people, this, that, the other, they don't know, and it looks really good. But as Carl Hutchinson said, and as we all agree, we're still all learning. So I've seen quite a few programs where they do things. I, it, I mean, we all have, where we go, oh, I've seen that before. That's a good idea. I'm going to look that up and see what that does, you know. <clears throat> but I do think that for certain programs and certain teams, I do think there needs to be a bit more onus on explaining uh, about protection and opening up and closing up because I do think some people will go rushing off to go and do an event paranormal investigation yeah. who don't know about that and they can open themselves up for all kinds of trouble, you know? Isn't that a personal choice? <clears throat> I think it's responsibility. It, no, it's a personal choice, but I don't think you should go running out there to do that. If you don't know about that sort of thing, what I'm trying to say is the TV shows could at least mention it or say why that has to be done, you know? Um, I because kind of, I understand, but in regards to TV, we've talked about this before, um, is they only get like 45 minutes and actually they, they don't want they get to... Exactly, yeah. you know, people aren't really interested in that side of it. They want to see the action. But I'm not talking about TV. I'm talking about field people everyday yeah. people working in the field you know what i mean do they do the opening um you know your protection and your opening properly if you're working spiritually i mean the amount of new mediums or new sensitives that seem to be popping up everywhere which isn't a bad thing there's a there's a huge spiritual awakening going on on a spiritual front um these days which is not a bad thing it's not a bad thing at all um but Again, are they just talking the talk, not learning the proper procedures and practices of what they're doing in regards to a spiritual front? Are, like we talked about right at the top of the show, smudging is a pure example of that. You know yeah. what I mean? That is a pure example of that. There is a pure, yeah. It's not just like you smudge six, say a few words and, and waft your negative energies out your home. There's a whole... It's a whole ritual kind of working and it's not and intention just, as well. and actually exactly an intention now this, yeah. the smudging bit is actually the smallest part of that yeah. that work yeah you know what i mean there's a whole lot of work that goes into it beforehand in the same way as when you're working on protection it's an ongoing everyday intention yeah. set manifestation of protection it's not just something you'll whack up the minute you go out on an investigation once a month or once every other week or once a week, mm -hmm. it's something you have to work on, On, you know, not just whilst you're out working in the field. It's something you have to work on on pretty much, I would say, a daily basis, particularly if you're I empathic use mine or sensitive. Every day. Yeah, if you're empathic or sensitive, it's something you should this, be working on every day, Kaz. See, this is the thing. On my own personal group, there's actually a video... And there is actually, um, I did a video, but I also put a post up and I explained protection, I explained opening, closing, protection bubble, I explained crystals, I explained, but I kept telling everybody, you should be doing this every day. You've mm -hmm. got to be doing this every day. It's not just when you go and investigate, especially for them passing things. And I keep saying it, and every now and again, you'll notice I keep bumping it up to the top. Yeah. Because I want people to keep, looking at it and actually get used to doing it. Yeah, and work at it on a daily basis. Yeah. In the same way, as there's no point getting your kit out once a week, once a month, so. leaving the batteries in <coughs> whilst it's in the case. You know what I mean? There's care that needs to be taken in regards yeah. to those to, keep, to make sure that your kit is in the optimum condition so you're not going to get false positives when you're out in the field that if it is going wrong you're aware of that you know you need to know your kit in the same way as you use a spiritual tool in the field you need to know your tool you know it's no different whether or not it's a pendulum or a k2 meter or yeah. a 
pair of dowsing rods or a, <coughs> Harry, I don't know, a mill meter? I, c- I can assure you, ladies, I definitely know my own tool. I'm sure you do, sweetie. Okay. I but do. But how many yes. people are just talking the talk? They come back from an investigation, shove it in a box, put it at the back of the garage or in a cupboard, and then go, okay, well, I put it all away. Next time I go on investigation, two hours before I get all the get all the kit out, charge all my batteries, off Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, off we go again. See, I always throw I, the batteries out. Things I use rechargeables. I don't use rechargeable. What I do is I usually throw them out, and usually the day before I'm going to an investigation, if things need charged up a bit, I'll do them. But anything that's just running on everyday batteries, I remove all the batteries and throw them out. Because mm. you shouldn't be leaving them in there. They can damage your equipment as well. Oh, no, no, I mean, the amount of kids' ever... toys that get the batteries left in, and then when you go to change the batteries, it's sort eroded of like a, and it's, it's eroded. It there's like a little acid, yeah. b- like yeah. crumble around the connector yeah. and yeah. you know particularly oh no i was gonna say that um after each investigation i always take the batteries out anyway um yeah. and i i'll start charging things about three or four days before um investigations but can i just say uh Carl in the chat room has said um okay i totally understand what you're saying but can i put out uh, why would you do protection if you're looking for evidence Okay, because it is a valid point and one that's very misunderstood. A protection is about your own personal energy space. Yes. That's what that is. It's not about affecting anything else. It's about protecting your own personal energy space. Now, if you want want that experience, it's not going to stop you from having an experience. It's not going to block any energy that's out there in the location or spirit energy. It's not going to do any of that. But what it does is it protects your own personal energy space. So some people say that you, the spirit will drain your own personal energy. That's not good. You don't want it draining your own personal energy. We, particularly when you've got things like EMF pumps and, you know, if, they, if they're strong enough to come through, they're strong enough to come through. They don't need to drain your own personal energy. And how many times have people said, I've got a banging headache, I feel really sick. And that's because their personal protections of their own personal energy haven't been protected. And that's why you protect yourself. Because you're protecting, it's responsibility for your own personal energy space. It's nothing to do. You are not going to affect any spirit contact, spirit energy, location energy by doing that. And the other thing is, if you happen to be a sensitive or an empath, You've got to remember that you can be greatly affected, not just by whatever energy is in the location, but by the energy of the people that are you're around as well. I've done a working Um, recently. I've done a working recently, and I was incredibly protected whilst doing that working. However, the energy drain, I'm still recovering from now. And that was, what, two weeks ago now? Yeah. Yeah, it must have been two weeks ago. And I'm still recovering on my auric level, and I had those protections in place. Yeah, I was just about to say, also, it it also helps to stop prevent (coughs) things from piggybacking, uh, so to speak. Am I right? If you're a sensitive, you're wide open to energies. Mm -hmm. If you're an empath, you're wide open to energies. And if you go into a place that is particularly active, they're automatically drawn to you. You're like a light. You draw them. It's like a moth to a light. So, I mean, yeah. you've got to protect yourself. You don't want something attaching to you. Do you so know think what I mean? So think of it in this way, okay? Think of it as you're the light. You, you've got, like, yeah. this light bulb. But all you're doing, and you want to attract those because that's what you're there trying to, yeah. to see, but all you're doing is put in, like, a clear, a clear, or even, like, a mesh around your light so they can get drawn to your light without touching the light. Yeah. And this, well, is no, like, um, this is no different on a day-to-day level. I'm just going to point this out as well. This is no mm-hmm. different on a day-to-day level. You re- think about it when you're um, talking to somebody who's really, really um, having trouble and is really emotional and stuff like that. If you're sitting there, that you can walk out that room and be so completely drained because of the emotional drain that that can take. You put your protections in place. You can actually deal with that situation in a lot better way because it's not using your energy to feed 
that emotional mm-hmm. output. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Kaz? Yeah. I've actually had conversations <coughs> with people, and I've been perfectly happy, but, I mean, I'm not perfect. I'm like everybody else. You forget to do protection now and again. You're have, having a busy day, whatever. But I've seen me being perfectly happy and being in somebody's energy. Their energy comes in, and it's completely wrecked my energy for the whole day or for days. It's affected me for days. You've got to protect yourself. You've always got to protect yourself. Okay, so Carla's actually put, wouldn't that be a personal choice? I know if you're a medium or sensitive, you have to be careful. But if you're a hardened investigator and you want stuff to happen because you want stuff to happen without a blanket around you, just, you know, it is a personal choice. You don't have to have protection. Yeah. But then don't moan if you get ill or you have a, a negative... Um, or the investigation affects experience. you in a way, or an experience. Yeah, yeah that's right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't moan about it because it is really important. You've invited to it in. You've not protected but yourself not. against it. It's like like yourselves. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not sensitive. Uh, that's why I use the tech a lot. But even I protect myself. And I know what it means when you say about paranormal hangovers, as I'm sure a lot of you do. And I've seen the effects of it. Um, what happens when you don't use um, protection. I've seen people go just down like a sack of spuds, pass mm. out, headaches, throw up, this, that, and the other. Um, it is a personal choice, but personally, whether you've got that protection up or not, if something's going to happen, it's going to happen anyway. The protection will just nullify anything coming home from you and affecting you that bad, that's all. Yeah, it'll stop it affecting you as badly. So there you go, Carl. But as well, I mean, like, when you're talking about everyday and everyday energies and things, the reason it's important to do that is because, I mean, you could be out shopping. Yeah. Yeah. You could be sitting in a cafe eating. There's somebody in there who's having a really hard time. If you're a sensitive, it can affect your mood. If you're an empath, it can affect your mood. You've got to have that protection. And you don't even... I thought that was just a... I thought that was just a lazy thing. No, you don't even realise it sometimes. That's you why, don't realise That's it. why some empaths and sensitives can't go into massive <coughs> crowded places because they find it overwhelming. Yeah. Even with all the protections in place, I mean, it's not infallible. You know what I mean? Think about that wire meshing around your light bulb, yeah? If you get enough bugs, as it were, being attracted to that light, that mesh could be overwhelmed or you get a particularly big... Or you get a particularly big bug. Do you know what I mean? Using that analogy, yeah. you know, or you, you know, it's not infallible. It's only as hard as you make your mesh, as it were, because you've got to remember it's an energy thing. We're not talking like a real life mesh. Yeah. You know, it's an energy thing. So it's it's yeah. how powerful you make that. And any protection shield can be overcome by the under the right circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. I've completely forgotten what I was going to say. I was going to say something really quite, um, for me, brainy for this sort of thing. And now <laughs> it's just gone completely out of my head. <clears throat> um, what you've got to remember as well, being a sensitive or an empath, they attra- they, they're going to automatically attract them energies anyway. Yeah. Hang on, I've got, I got one to explain it to, to, explain it to Carl. Um, it is a personal choice, but like myself, I teach martial arts. I can either use pads or not use pads. Again, my personal choice. If I use pads, I'm going to get hit and I'm going to feel it. If I don't use pads, I'm still going to get hit. But I won't have the after effects because it won't be as powerful a blow as it would have been without protection. Does that make it a bit clearer? I yeah I agree with yeah. that yeah yeah I agree with that yeah. having having done that working that I did a little while ago and so I'm still I'm still on an edit on an energy level I'm not working energy at the moment because I st- I'm still building that back up again because it was that powerful you know it was that <laughs> strong I can't I'm not going to go into detail on that but it <sighs> how many people have I spoken to um, you know close mentors I would use that word. <laughs> Um, about what happened and yes I had my protections in place but it was just so it's like fighting a battle 
It's like fighting yeah. a battle. You go into battle and it lasts 10 minutes. It's not going to take you huge amounts of time to recover. You go into a battle and you're at it for hours, then that is going to take a lot longer to recover from. I normally am. I prefer going at it for hours and recovering for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I do hope you're talking about battles, Mark. Yes, of course I am. What You have to get your mind out of the gutter, young lady. Uh, you know my gutter mind. Now... Yes, both ways. I should do. Oh, we stay the night will, at your place. You will experience the unknown both ways. It's just the impact it might have on you that it will be different. On a personal level. This is a personal level. So you could go to a location. You could get shoved by a spirit. That is going to be no different whether or not you've got protection in place at all. What it's not going to be able to do if you've got protection in place or it's going to have a, a minimum effect on you is if it starts draining your energy. Yeah. there's the difference it's not going to yeah. stop a spirit from you know knocking rapping talking t touching it's not going to do that but what it will do is it will stop it from personally affecting your energy your own personal energy so yeah. you'll be able to walk out of there you'll be able to you know recuperate quicker you'll be able to know that you yourself, your core self, has not been affected. Your own personal energy hasn't been affected. You're still going to get tired the day after because you've been up all night. <coughs> yeah. Because that's a physical reaction to what you've done the night before. If you've gone out climbing trees all day, all night, looking for hanging things, you're going to feel that on a physical level. It's not going to protect you from that. But it is going to stop your own personal energy levels, your own core self from being affected it's, it's as i was trying to say it's a, it's a difference between <coughs> being being hit hard and having the outer effect or being hit very softly and maybe having a bit a little bit of an and this is why it's really you want. important to know what you're doing in regards to these practices yeah. because we can all sit there and go yeah i protect are you really you know yeah yes i know how to use the spirit box do you really? Do you know what that piece of tech is actually recording? How it works? You know what I mean? It goes back to, are we walking the walk or are we just talking the talk? And this is the whole point of this show tonight. I wanted to distill it down to a very basic concept. It's about knowing what you're doing in the field. Not just knowing, but knowing what you're doing yeah. in the field. I think 50% of us do. I was going to say, I think it's half I think 50% of us <clears throat> do, or maybe a bit less, but there's, there's a good percentage of us that actually know what we're doing, what we're talking about, and we do do that, but it depends what the situation is, what the investigation is. But you've also got the people who don't have the experience yet or let the egos get better of them and chuck all the precautions and walking to walk to one side because they know best. So I do think you've got those potentially as well. But hoping the majority of us do it sensibly. Kaz? I think people need to definitely from the protection level, people need to work on that. From the tech level, I'm not going to moan at other people because I feel when we go on investigations, yeah, I know my tech stuff, but there are people, if you've got people there that have never been in an investigation, don't you have a responsibility to show them how that works properly, how to use that properly and what you're doing with it? If you're in charge of the team, you know yes. I mean? Yeah. But, I mean, even just... I've seen me being on investigations, but I'm not in charge of the team, but somebody's asked me how something works, I'm going to explain it to them, aren't I? I know. I we all have a bit of responsibility, we don't we, when we go? Yeah. It's your own choice. It's your own choice. Yeah. I mean, there's another point that Carla's raised in the chat room. It's about personal responsibility for your own tool. You're, we have said this how many times? Your body is one of the best tools you can have in the paranormal field. Your physical body is one of the best tools, regardless of spiritual, regardless of tech, or anything else. Your physical body is one of the best tools you can have in the paranormal field. Yes? Mine definitely yes. is. Mm -hmm. How you treat that prior to an investigation or in life in general, I would say, actually, your body is your temple. You know what I mean? I'm built for comfort, not for speed. If you're looking after it 
and you're feeding it the right things and you're drinking the right things, then it's going to work at a much better um, level and become a better tool for you than if you abused it with, you know, high fat, high sugar, high, no exercise, no um, mindful thinking. You know what I mean? Those kind of things. Lots, lots of alcohol, that sort of thing. You shouldn't yeah. drink on investigation. That changes Don't drink your perce- on investigation. No, no, that no, no, changes no, no, no. your perception completely. Or do drugs. Yeah, don't I wouldn't do, let do, MDN do. in investigation. It'd be near alcohol. No. Or it's drugs. No. No. No, no not exactly. Um, that would be a bad idea. That would be like getting absolutely tanked up the night before an investigation. Well, uh, no. to be fair... That I, I will hold my hands up on this one. There has been an occasion where I was out during the day, drastically tried to sober up before I went. I was hosting. I wasn't um, investigating on... It was like a public investigation. And, oh, my God. Oh, you didn't. Midnight, the hangover hit. Oh, my God, that was the worst night ever. All I can say. I actually had an argument with an investigator who was coming to one of my events because... I asked him not to drink energy drinks and he was arguing that he needed the energy drinks and I'm going, but it's still a bloody stimulant. Mm. <laughs> it's still a stimulant. And Carlos and just drank, said that. How many people out there drink energy drinks during an investigation? Loads, he drinks loads and loads. I can yeah. name loads. <laughs> and then he turned around and he go, um, I'm an adult, you can't tell me what to do. And I, th- I said, well, it's my investigation, I can, you're not drinking them. Yeah. So... You know, high caffeine, oh, okay. high okay. sugar contents to keep you going is not the best thing to have on an investigation it's... because it changes the receptors in the brain. <coughs> Tetrazine, oh, there's so exactly. much tetrazine in energy drinks, it's horrible. Exactly, horrible. the effects it has on your body yeah. is, is actually incredible, which is going to change your perception of things whilst you're on an investigation. Yeah, well, I was in the Before... that night, so... <laughs> Before we finish, I was going to say, but Carl has said, yeah, how many people out there drink energy drinks during an investigation? I'm not going to mention names, but um, I know myself that for every single investigation I've been on, there's at least two people drinking energy drinks. And that's just like members of the public. Team people, I know one particular team member that we used to have that drunk about three or four of those energy drinks every single investigation. Um, and I think pretty much most teams, you do get a couple of people that drink them as well. Yeah, I don't. I, to be fair, I don't touch energy drinks. I don't at touch all. energy ever, drinks. Ever, ever. I don't, even when I'm out on the lash, I won't touch a vodka and, and well-known energy drink or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, did you? Anyway, on oh, that great. note, mm-hmm. it is Come time right. to wrap this little show up. Now, what have we got coming up? We've got quite a few different topics that we are going to be discussing over the next few weeks. <coughs> Keep an eye on the Parasearch Radio page, like page and group page for further details of what's coming up in the fo- in the weeks to follow. And if you miss any of our shows, don't forget you can subscribe to our YouTube channel um, and it will give you a notification when a new show has gone up. Or you can listen to any of the shows you miss because they all go to podcast here on Spreaker. And on that note, I would like to say thank you so much, guys, for joining me and flying by the seat of our pants with this walking the walk or talking the talk kind of discussion. So say good night, guys. Good night. Um, also, before we go, if anybody out there has got any suggestions that they would like to, us to hear us talk about in the show, you can either go onto the radio website and message us or you can contact us on Dark Night on Twitter and messages on there and we'll take in your comments and see what we can do so good night that's very very true and if you'd like to be a guest then get in touch and we'll have a chat with you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on that note everybody good night thank you for joining us and we will be back on Sunday with the Spirit Dimension and I have the lovely Claire Hinks in the studio and we are talking all about <coughs> manifesting your New Year's resolutions how you can do that what tools you can use to do that so join us on Sunday 9pm good night everybody thank you for listening don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week find us on Facebook Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.